mid-journey aspect ratio in 30-ish seconds. There may be times when you want your mid-journey outputs to be something other than the default square. Twitter and Instagram posts, they can both be 4x5 for example. A desktop wallpaper might be 16x9, while our phone is more likely to be 9x16 tall. So when you want something like that, you type in your prompt as usual, and then use the minus minus AR option, uh, AR for aspect ratio, like minus minus AR 4x5, or minus minus AR 16x9. But there's a dot here, which is the same with all of these options. Be careful that your minus minus doesn't get autocorrected to a single long dash. If this happens, then it's good to try a different keyboard mode if you're on your phone and you have that available, or at a push, type in minus space minus, and then go back and delete the space. I know, right? It's a total pain in the ass. Some people spotted in my last video, probably linked up here somewhere, that I was using mid-journey images in Notion as my page headers. So I find that the images don't need to be super relevant, they just need to be different enough from each other uh, that so I can spot them easily. It helps if they're slightly reminiscent of the subject, but I find it a lot easier to find the images than scanning all of the titles. Um, I've also been using them as background and text elements in these videos. Notion recommends images of around 1,500 pixels by 600 pixels, which maths tells me is a ratio of five by two. So I just take the title of whichever page I'm doing and then stick that into Mid Journey and then add minus minus AR 5.2 at the end of it, and then pick whatever is generated from there. Once you've picked one from the four that it gives you, that comes out at um, 1920 by 768 pixels, which is more than enough for what we need. Meanwhile, Instagram and Twitter are both really good at 4 by 5 ratio, and where does that ratio come from? Well, traditionally, photographic prints are often um, 8 by 10s or 16 by 20 so you'll find a whole bunch of frames like this one, or this one here that's got the 20 by 16, that are already pre-made in those ratios and therefore a lot cheaper. So a good thing to do is find a frame that you like, buy it, and then work out the ratio you need to plug into mid-journey to give you the prints that you want. And then if you print your art, four by five is a really great ratio for that. At the moment, mid-journey doesn't output the resolution you really need for a good quality print. So at eight by 10, this one here, you would need about 2,400 by 3,000 pixels and double both of those for the, for the bigger image. But there are ways to upscale your images using other software and I have a video game probably linked up here that teaches you how to do that. I've also got a Samsung frame over here which I love showing mid-journey artwork in and that's a 16 by 9 ratio. When wouldn't you use minus minus AR? Well, Sometimes a shape doesn't have a nice convenient ratio. A1, A2, A3, A4 paper, for example, has a ratio of one by the square root of two, uh, which is roughly one by 1.4142, probably. Now, Mid Journey doesn't like that one bit. You can't put it in. Instead, we can look at the actual size and keep in mind that Mid Journey likes sizes above 256, which in A3 paper in millimeters is 297 by 420, and we can put that into Mid Journey using the width and height like this minus minus W, 297, minus minus H, 420. The output won't be that exact size, but internally, Mid Journey will convert that to a ratio, so the end result will be right, give or take a few pixels for the same boring computer maths reasons as before. And that is how you use aspect ratio or width and height if you need to make an image suitable for whatever you want to do with it. Put it in the frame. Like if you found this useful, there'll be uh, more videos like this. Although I mainly focus on generative art, drawing machines and life as a self-employed artist. Subscribe if that appeals to you. Otherwise you have a great day and enjoy mid journey and show me what you make. Bye.